If you're watching this, then you're probably gearing up for an AWS certification or at least thinking about taking one. In fact, it's way easier to get a job in the cloud with an AWS certification rather than without one. But getting an AWS certification isn't easy. There are so many different levels to AWS certifications. And not long ago, AWS introduced a brand new Data Engineer Associate Certification, which I think makes everything more confusing for beginners on where to start. Now, I am an AWS Cloud Engineer and I hold the Cloud Practitioner Foundational Solution Architect Associate and the Solution Architect Professional Certification. And I'm going to share with you a complete AWS certification roadmap to help you navigate in the AWS Cloud world. Before we get started, you should check out my weekly cloud newsletter where I share free resources, tutorials, boot camps, and so much more to help you make your cloud move. Now, if you're thinking of getting started with AWS and getting your first six-figure cloud role, you're already on the right track, but you're missing that one crucial thing, an AWS certification. But why should you get one? Passing your first AWS certification proves that you have the knowledge about AWS. And having cloud computing knowledge without an AWS certification is like flying a plane without a pilot's license. It's impressive, but missing that official AWS stamp can hold you back, especially if you have no work experience. Now, most companies are already riding the cloud wave and a cloud computing market is set to skyrocket in 2024. And AWS is also the biggest cloud platform. So getting certified in AWS will help you stand out from the crowd. Now, did you know an AWS solution architect can make over $150,000 per year on average? That is a lot of money for an AWS skilled engineer. AWS offers various certifications divided into seven core and five specialty categories to suit different experience levels. You can do the certifications at foundational, associate, professional, and specialty levels. The foundational is a cloud practitioner. The associate certifications are the solution architect, developer, sysop admin, and data engineer, which is the new one. And then we have the professional certifications, such as the solution architect and the DevOps engineer. And finally, the specialty certifications in advanced networking, data analytics, machine learning, databases, security, and SAP. Let's start with the cloud practitioner at the foundational level. If you're new to the cloud and want a top level understanding of how the cloud works, the business benefits and the core services, then I suggest taking the Cloud Practitioner Foundational Certification. It's an easy and intro level certification to get started and although it doesn't test you on your technical skills, it's more about getting your head around your cloud services. It's perfect if you're making the jump from a different industry into the cloud or if you have no tech background. The exam is priced at $100 and 90 minutes long and 65 multiple choice questions. You can also take your exam in 12 languages languages. I ended up taking this exam in Japanese. Now, if you already have a cloud and IT background, then I suggest skipping the foundational level and going to the associate level certifications. The associate level certification is a deep dive into the technical aspects of AWS. And there are four different associate levels to choose from. Solution architect, developer, sysops admin, and data engineer. This is where things can get tricky and where most people can get confused. I recommend always starting with the Solution Architect Associate Certification. By doing this certification first, you'll be exposed to what AWS services are for and how to integrate them with each other. But not only that, you will also gain knowledge and skills in deploying, managing, and operating workloads on AWS, as well as implementing security controls and compliance requirements. Now, this exam is priced at $150 and is 130 minutes long, and you get 65 multiple choice or multiple response questions. In fact, all associate level certifications cost the same and have the same exam structure apart from the new data engineer one. There is also no hands-on testing in this exam. It's all theory and multiple choice questions. Now, once you have the solution architect associate exam, you have a decision to make. Do you continue with the associate level certifications or do you attack the professional ones like the solution architect professional? Now, this depends on you and your situation. If you want to get a job as a cloud engineer or DevOps engineer where you need to be a little bit more hands-on, then I recommend you doing the developer associate level next. However, if you want to be an architect, then focus on getting the solution architect professional. And of course, if you did want a more hands-on role, then do the developer and then 
and the DevOps Engineer Professional Certification. Now I'm going to quickly cover the Developer Associate Certification before going into the professional level ones. Now, don't dismiss the Developer Associate just because you're not planning on becoming a developer. This one is not specifically for coding experts. It's important for anyone navigating the cloud and AWS world. Being a DevOps or cloud engineer means you're working with developers and software teams. It equips you with the language to talk to developers regardless of your background. And with this certification, you'll uncover the secrets of developing and optimizing applications on AWS and you'll master the art of packaging and deploying applications using CI CD workflows. And you'll learn to secure your code and data. I think this is a great one if you want a more hands-on cloud role. Now, if you want to get started with the cloud and become a cloud engineer, then you should check out my cloud engineer course, where I provide you with a structured way of learning and helping you go from zero to cloud engineer hero, covering the fundamentals, the tools, and the technologies to learn and become a cloud engineer through self-paced videos, live workshops, and hands-on projects. Right now, it's at a big discount for pre-order, so move fast before the launch price. I will link it in the description of this video. So next up, the professional level certifications, and these are the big ones, the most challenging, and the one you need to prepare for the most. Now, I do think you should spend at least one year working with AWS and building projects before moving to the professional level certifications, and there are two certifications at the professional level that you can do the Solution Architect and the DevOps Engineer Professional. Both certifications cost $300 and you get 180 minutes to take these exams. So firstly, we have the Solution Architect Professional. This is the most recent one that I've passed and here you will showcase advanced knowledge and skills in providing complex solutions to complex business problems. You'll be able to optimize security, cost, and performance, also automating manual processes. You really need to know your stuff at this level, and AWS recommends that you have two or more years of hands-on experience designing and deploying cloud architectures on AWS. But to be honest, I think one year is enough to study and pass this exam if you have a hands-on role. And for this exam, you will need to be familiar with the AWS CLI, AWS APIs, AWS CloudFormation templates, and the AWS Billing Console. You also need to understand the best practice guidance on architectural design and across multiple applications and projects, and be able to evaluate cloud application requirements and architectural recommendations for implementation, deployment, and provisioning applications on AWS. Now, personally, I really enjoy taking this exam and it's one that's helped me secure more opportunities in the cloud because it's very well respected in the cloud industry. Now, I think one professional certification is enough, but you can also do the DevOps Engineer Professional. This is an extension of the developer and the SysOps Admin Associate certifications. For this certification, you need to experience developing code in at least one high-level programming language, building highly automated infrastructures and administrating operating systems, and also you need to have an understanding of modern development and operation processes and methodologies. Not just that, you also need the ability to implement and manage CI CD pipelines on AWS. And I recommend you taking this if you already have experience working in a cloud or DevOps engineer role. Finally, we have the speciality certifications, and these are just as hard as the professional ones. The AWS speciality certifications cost $300 and you get 170 minutes to take the exams with 65 questions to cover. I also think that it's best to take speciality exams if you want to be an expert in an area. Don't do one for fun. Think about your career and then specialize in an AWS speciality and you have six to choose from. Advanced networking, data analytics, machine learning, databases, security, and SAP. Typically, most cloud engineers and architects that I know take the security one first because it's the most popular and a big topic in the cloud world and a great one to specialize in. And the rest is completely up to you. I personally know people who have taken every single AWS certification, which is definitely a bit of an overkill. Now, the truth is that there are many paths to explore in the AWS world of certifications and the right one depends on your background and experience. And if you're new to the cloud world, then pick the AWS foundational practitioner exam first. If you want to be an architect, then focus on the architect route. If you want to be hands-on, do the architect one first. 
and then go into developer and DevOps. There is no one size fits all route. It's all about your personal and professional goal. You might aim for two, three, five, or even all AWS certifications, but a word of caution, don't spend too much time overthinking which ones to study for because you don't want to get stuck in decision-making process, which will lead to analysis paralysis where you overthink and end up not taking any action whatsoever. And here is my golden advice. Focus on building your skills rather than chasing certification. Get one or two certification, but then focus on building hands-on skills. In the end, it's the skills and knowledge you gain from the certification that will help you stand out in technical interviews for roles like solution architect, cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, or any other AWS position that you're interested in. So to recap, the AWS cloud certification roadmap starts with foundational levels, progresses through the associates, and then you have the professionals, and then you can explore the specialities. However, real world skills and practical experience is always more valuable. Each certification comes with its own set of challenges, cost, and time requirements. But one key takeaway is to prioritize learning and building practical skills. Now, where do you even study and which resources do you use? I always recommend you look at Tutorials Dojo for AWS Cloud Certification exams. For example, the mock exams, use Wiz Labs for any hands-on labs, and then use Stefan Marek's courses on Udemy to pass your AWS AWS certifications. They are some of the best resources out there. Drop a comment below which AWS certification that you're going to focus on in 2024. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.